In this video, I'm covering rebuilding an axle, which is an option if you catch it early enough. If you get to the point that it's making noise, it's probably not worth rebuilding because something is damaged inside. In my case, I found that the inner boot was leaking some grease, it has not started making any noise, and so I took the opportunity to rebuild it. I'm rebuilding the axle on the 2000 Volvo that you've probably seen on the channel. It's a great how-to for that, but it's also usable if it's a non-Volvo car. The CV axles on front-wheel drive cars are very similar across the board, so even if this doesn't look exactly like yours or the size isn't exactly the same, it's going to be the same idea, and so this is still a great how-to for you to watch. Before we get started today, I just want to mention that I have two other CV axle related videos. The first is about how to diagnose a worn CV axle. The other is about why I chose to rebuild or buy a high quality axle versus buying a low quality axle from Rock Auto, Advanced Auto Parts, stores like that. I encourage you to check both those videos out to arm yourself with as much knowledge as possible. But with all that said, let's get into rebuilding a CV axle. Let's cover what you'll need to rebuild the axle. Firstly, an axle rebuild kit. I suggest going with as high a quality as possible, either OEM or supplier like GKN or Lowbro. The boots on lower end kits can be really prone to tearing and damage, they're not as high a quality. And in one case, for a different axle, I bought a kit from Napa and the boot was completely incorrect, it didn't even fit the axle, but that's what they had for that car. You need brake clean or parts cleaner to get rid of all the grease, lots of towels, lots of gloves, a hammer, screwdrivers, CV clamp pliers, these are a lot easier to use with the correct style clamps than just using regular pliers, or the cheaper clamps. I used a knife to cut through the vibration dampener because I had to get that out of the way on these particular axles. And lastly, it's not a bad idea to have some larger sockets just so you can hit the race back onto the axle shaft squarely and evenly. I started working on the inner joint since that's the one that was leaking. It shouldn't matter which side you start on, but I'll cover in a second why it mattered on this Volvo axle. Using a flathead screwdriver, you should be able to put it between the two parts of the clamp and just pop it right off. Sometimes if your axle is a little more rusted or crusty, you have to cut it off, but I prefer to be as least destructive as possible when I'm disassembling stuff, just in case I need that old part or I want to look at it for reference or something like that. Now just to touch on my specific Volvo issue, I think it's only a P80 thing, it might affect the newer ones, I'm honestly not sure. There's little tabs on the cup that hold the tripod in, so unless you grind those down, you're not getting the tripod out of the cup. I didn't do that because I didn't want to risk messing anything up. So what I did was I just soaked this whole assembly in brake clean and parts degreaser overnight, and that worked really well to clean everything out. So I am sorry that the tripod isn't coming out of the cup because of my particular axle here that I'm working on, but it's really not a huge deal because you're not supposed to disassemble the tripod anyway. Those bearings are supposed to stay together, and you don't want to touch them even if you are rebuilding the axle. So we're going to move to the other side where everything does come apart, and this is actually the more complicated area of rebuilding an axle. I realized that I just got done saying I don't like to be destructive, but I am going to be cutting the boot and vibration dampener off this axle because I can't get the inner joint apart. I don't really have a choice. It's all got to come out this direction. I could keep the boot intact if I wanted to, but because I don't have a lot of space to work and I want to get that joint off the axle, I'm removing the boot just to free up some space and make my life easier. CV axles typically have a small clip here that you have to remove in order to slide the bearing assembly off the axle shaft. I'm not sure why mine doesn't. Everything that I read about these axles is that it should, but I don't have to remove it because it doesn't exist. You'll have to remove it and then you can slide the bearing assembly off the axle shaft. The way that I said that makes it sound incredibly simple and that's not the case. Not that it's incredibly difficult, but it involves some use of force to get that bearing assembly off the axle shaft. In my case, I actually lucked out because the hammer that I have, the ball peen end was small enough that it contacted only the inner part of that race and no other part of the bearing so I wasn't risking damaging anything while hitting it off of the shaft itself. Chances are you'll need to use a punch or a screwdriver, something to get a smaller surface area into that inner part of the bearing. I will suggest using a bench vise and securing it so that gravity is working for you, so you're hitting it down off of the shaft, not some other direction. With the assembly off the axle shaft, you can now take it all apart to clean it and inspect it for damage. Before you do that, make sure you take a picture of how it looks. With most CV axles, the cage and the race are directional, so they're installed one particular way and you want to know how it was installed before you take it all apart and don't know how to put it back together. Your exact axle configuration determines if you have to remove the tripod from the shaft, but those tripod bearings are non-serviceable, so if they are damaged, they'd have to be fully replaced anyway. Now that being said, if you did have to replace something like the tripod or the ball bearings or the cage, I don't know where to source those. As far as the Volvo axle goes, I didn't find any place that sold just those parts if you wanted to rebuild like the internals of the axle. 
If anyone watching this video knows where to source those parts, regardless if it's for a Volvo or not, please leave a comment or a link. I'd love to know. I'm sure others would like to know as well. This next chapter is about my struggle with removing the vibration dampener, which is something you don't have to worry about if you could remove the tripod from the cup. So if this isn't a concern of yours, feel free to skip it and go on to the reassembly of the axle. To quickly sum this up, if you have to remove this, just buy an angle grinder. <laughs> I tried a Dremel, I tried a hacksaw, neither of them worked. That outer portion is just really thick, solid metal. The rubber part isn't solid though, so what I did was I just used a really long knife and sliced through that rubber to separate that outer metal piece from the shaft itself. I thought it was going to come off a lot easier, so I wasn't prepared for this. I had the knife laying around, I figured I would just use that and get through it and get it done, but having the proper tools for the job is definitely helpful. With the dampener taken care of, I can now slide that inner boot off the axle shaft. I kind of touched on it earlier, but I'll mention it again. How you do this depends on your exact axle and your situation and what you want to do. So whether you want to knock the tripod off the axle shaft, if you don't have a dampener, if you do have a dampener, however you want to go about it, just do whatever is easiest for you. And now, after some cooking show magic, everything is clean and ready for reassembly. At this stage, cleanliness and organization is your friend. As you can see, I traded out all the towels, everything is nice and clean, laid out, ready to go. Before you reassemble anything, just inspect all the parts, make sure there's no weird friction marks or wear marks anywhere. You don't want to be reassembling an axle that's damaged and is going to give you problems once it's back on the car. The final thing I like to do is have the boots and grease ready for each side, that way I'm not mixing them up, and they're all in the right spot, ready to go. I have seen some people just slide the boot onto the axle shaft, dump the grease into the boot, clamp it down, call it a day. That's not how I do things. If it's how you do it, fine, but I just take a little extra step. Just like if you were to pack a bearing, you really want to pack the grease in there, make sure that it's everywhere, and so that's how I treat these. I get in as much as I can, you know, with the tripod still into that cup, but I want to pack those bearings as much as I can, make sure that they have grease in there. For me, doing it this way is just a little extra time, and it provides me with a little extra peace of mind that that thing is lubricated properly. Once all your grease is in, go ahead and slide your boot back on. I do suggest going slow in this part because the tripod likes to move around and the last thing you want to do is dump all your grease out. On this axle where the boot sits on the shaft, there is a little indent, so you have to slide it, make sure it's seated properly in there, and then clamp it. My kit came with the Etiker style clamps, which are better than what comes in the cheaper rebuild kits. These clamps apply the force uniformly around the axle, similar to how like a fuel line clamp works versus just your standard worm hose clamp. You can also use the band clamps that you have those pliers that you kind of wind and it tightens it, or if you're in a pinch, just use a zip tie. The idea with these style clamps is that you fasten them onto the axle as tight as you can by hand, and you take up the extra slack by crimping that ear. I do suggest using these specific pliers because unlike normal pliers, they're going to apply force to each side of the ear and the top of the ear, ensuring that you take up the slack around the clamp and not just deform the ear. If you try to use normal pliers, you might just mash that ear up, not take up enough slack, and then you've got a leaking boot all over again. Before we start, I just want to cover which direction to load these parts into the housing. This side has a square shoulder, no chamfer. The other side has a small chamfer on it. You can tell if you look at the two different sides and compare. I'm placing the chamfered edge down, meaning that's in the housing, and up would face the axle shaft. The inner race also has two different sides. The stepped side goes with the square edge. And then this is how it's all assembled onto the shaft. One last thing I want to cover is how to get everything into the housing. I didn't cover this during removal because you can't see it. The best way to think about it is to load everything in perpendicular and then spin it into place. So load the race into the cage perpendicular, spin it and it slots in and now it's stuck. Then take the cage perpendicular to the housing, spin that and now it's in the housing. Then take that whole thing, spin it and install the ball bearings through the side of the cage. The outer rebuild kit comes with two bags of grease while the inner only came with one. So for this outer joint, I took the first bag, I just dumped it right into the housing, then I installed the cage and the race, and as I was installing the ball bearings, I just added more grease as I went along. Nothing too difficult here, it's not really rocket science, but you just have to know how to get everything in, which I kind of explained when it was out. If you do have any questions about this, leave a comment, I'm happy to help. Provided you've already finished the inner joint, when you put the outer joint together, you don't have access to the other side, so you have to slide the clamp and boot on the axle shaft before you load the bearing assembly and housing onto there. If you're working on a Volvo axle, you know that what holds it into the transmission is that little lock ring, and you have to smack it in until it interfaces properly and is locked. The outer assembly attaches to the shaft in the same way. The best way I've found to deal with this when installing the axle into the transmission or installing this outer joint onto the axle shaft is to have the open end on the bottom, the close end on the top, and just let it hang there. 
any other position and it doesn't seem to really work as well. So let gravity help you out. Hold that thing down with the open end on the bottom. I don't have actual footage of me installing the assembly onto the axle shaft, but I think this breakdown here will serve you better. So I took a 1 and 1 8 socket and that fit over the splines on the end of the housing. And then I used a 13 16 socket to kind of hold it up and keep it level. Then you just give it a couple whacks with the hammer and it'll be back on the shaft. I did take visual note of where it was before I took it off, you know, during the disassembly process. But you can also hear and feel when it's engaged with the lock ring. The sound changes a little bit and the feeling is solid, it's no longer sliding on. The only thing left to do now is to clamp down this side. Again, just like the other side, make sure that that boot is seated properly on the housing and the axle shaft before you clamp. The only other thing I did before installing them on the car was just move the joints around and, you know, move them in and out, play with them a whole bunch. I just wanted to make sure that there was no leaks coming out of the boots before I got it on the car. Whether or not you're working on a P80 Volvo, I hope you found this video helpful. I do think it's generic enough to help out anyone, but also specific enough for those of you who might be working on a P80 axle. Don't be afraid to leave any questions or comments. I try to get to everybody. Check out those other CV Axle videos if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.